So this is Luke 18, the parable of the persistent widow. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God and care what people think, yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will God not bring about justice for his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly, how even when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth. Hi, I'm, I'm Lizzie Mackay, I'm from Glasgow. Um, I've been through a lot in life, I've struggled, but now where I am, I've got my son Brody, which I've not always had him in my care. Um, I've fought very hard to get him back into my care, um, and it just, with the help of this church, has helped me a lot as well, coming here. A lot of other places have helped me, but I think, I believe, starting to believe in God, it's a bit, do you know what I mean? I just think everything's coming together, um, but you just need to keep fighting for what you want in life. If you don't keep fighting, you'll never, ever get to where your goals are. Well, when we first looked at the passage of the persistent widow, thinking about us as foster carers, um, what struck me was that it's been God's persistence with us in becoming foster carers, first of all, because I think, um, remember God speaking to me on a plain journey, reading a Christian book about act of love, and the thing about fostering came up, and I just thought we'd, we've, we've got four boys of our own, and the, and the stage we've got to was becoming the point where we could do it, and I thought, oh, maybe God's prompted me to this, nah, too much hard work. Um, <laughs> and so it hung about with me for over a year, um, with little prompts now and again and me trying to ignore it and then eventually I thought you know what if God's telling me to do something that's what I should be doing so I mentioned it to Ian on a Friday in the car and then <laughs> I thought you were mad <laughs> well I am <laughs> absolutely mad like why why on earth would we bring this additional chaos and confusion and potential for stuff into a ready fairly busy lives um, and I I guess I tried to fob you off is the honest answer and avoid it and evade it um, the sort of you know doing the doing the Jonah thing I'll not deal with this right now you know I, I would have said for, for 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 almost all of my life I'd be I'd been into social justice and, and fairness and and fostering for me has been a real journey that because at times you feel like your your whole your whole identity being challenged about it because some of the stuff just the messiness and the chaos that gets passed on by the system towards us as foster cares I would just get really really annoyed so so often the easy thing to do would have been to the thing I really wanted to do was just throw the toys out of the pram and go in the half because you're been because your 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 buttons are my buttons at least were being pressed in a way that, that they they've not been done in, in a very long time, and actually that passage I think speaks into that of of actually just um, of of like God's ways in our in our lives and the, and the challenge you know to realize to actually for me to look in a mirror and think hey mate you you are not nearly as compassionate and kind as you as you might you might think you are and, and, and actually to realise that God wants to do some soul work within me in that system and, and actually to, to, to sort of do work on my character um, and, and actually that that, that that passage of the pers persistent widow calls me just to hang in there and then to get to the other side of it and see that some really really good things have emerged out of it just because of the patience and, and just actually some, some, of, some of the stuff the, the interactions that we've had with, with parents um, and, and with the kids that have just been beautiful. But they've been born out of something that's been profoundly hard. 
I'm just grateful to have been part of that and, and realised that I think the Lord leads us on a journey for, for good reasons and persistence has been that desire to be the bigger person, to hang in there, has been a really, really important learning point for me. Every day is a school day. We've been foster carers for a while now and we've um, had a, a good experience with children because they've been young and that's been the children have been easy, but working with the system and the parents and the social workers all brings its own stresses and challenges. Um, just because it's very difficult decisions that are having to be made and very difficult judgments that are having to be made about the parents, uh, about the children themselves, where it's better for them. And we're very glad that we're not the ones making those decisions, but it's also been difficult for us to sit back sometimes when decisions are being made that we don't really understand or don't agree with. Um, and that's been a journey for us. And for, for me in particular, it's been a journey in me trusting God that he's involved in the system and he's involved with all the things that are made. And I find that really freeing and lovely that we have that extra faith that many foster carers maybe won't have. And um, I honestly don't think I could do it if I didn't trust that there was a bigger picture and someone that the, the just judge was in charge of all of this rather than possibly an unjust judge or just even people who don't have all the information. They don't have all the how can we know what's in people's heads and hearts for anyone? So, yeah, um, that's th that parable really speaks into that for us, that um, we're doing the bit that we can, we're loving the children, we're giving them consistency and um, just attachment um, to people who are consistent and loving and they know where we're at. But I, we've also had to be in relationship with the parents and then um, that has been good as well because a lot of the time I've had to think that God believes in forgiveness and redemption and new starts and people who made mistakes deserve another chance and God gives me so many chances and so sometimes we can probably as human beings we bin people on what they've done in the past and um, Certainly it's been a long journey for me to ju just really keep thinking if I was God here I would be forgiving, I'd be redemption for that person, I'd be and giving them a new start and another opportunity and that's what often social work are trying to do within safe boundaries and it's actually quite hard, it's easier to go, nah you've made mistakes. So the unjust judge and the just judge is quite a good thing to be thinking about as foster carers. One of the really um moving bits and almost a form of, of closure um, I think for, for Edith and I was um, being sent a, a video clip of, um, of, of this child that we'd been looking after um, and the video clip was of him walking for the first time um, and it was just it, it was so interesting because actually I, I think I think over the time we had him, um, I you couldn't but love, but you also knew that you were not that child's parent. That wasn't the job, and it was short term. And so actually, you you were giving a piece of yourself, um, but but actually, yeah, then then you had to say goodbye, and the goodbye, no matter how much you might pretend otherwise, the goodbye was tough. But then seeing that video clip of, of this um, of this young young child walking and laughing for the first time and then being sent that from from the parent was just amazing. And, and to realise that there, there isn't there isn't a sense, there, there isn't an ongoing role for us in that in that child's life. But it's just is to, to, to have been a part of that for a little while was so was was so moving um, and, and wonderful. I just love that moment of, of that wee video clip. And then when we look at the painting of, um, of the mother and the child come back, for me, if, you know, if, if that's the story of that painting, of, of the persistent um, parent um, going and going and going through a system that can be broken and messy and really frustrating and eventually is reunited with her child, then that is just a thing of beauty and wonder. And 
for foster carers to play a part in that, well, that's just doing the job, but it is a real privilege to have been just a part of something like that, as what's been, what's been spoken about or represented um, in that painting.